Hello, ladies and gentlemen. The leader of BSWville, BSW, is back again to give you all my reactions and review on WWE 2017 Backlash that took place last night. What do I think about it? What's my reactions? Check it out. Okay, first up, we got Dolph Ziggler going one-on-one -on -one with his new rival, Shinsuke Nakamura. It was a good match where we see great moments like Dolph Ziggler's DDT and zigzag with Nakamura still being able to kick out. Dolph Ziggler even super kicked Shinsuke Nakamura in the back of the head, but he was still able to kick out. Dolph and Shinsuke gave it their all, but in the end, Shinsuke Nakamura striked. Dolph Ziggler with the King Sasa, or how do you say it, to win his first match representing SmackDown Live and marking it the first prediction I got right. The good here is that Shinsuke Nakamura won his first match representing SmackDown Live. The bad is, of course, me not having too much to say about it, and the ugly is pretty much Dolph Ziggler super kidding kicking Nakamura in the back of the head. Next is the first championship match of the night where the Usos defend the SmackDown Live Tag Team titles against Breezango, Fandango, and Tyler Breeze. It was a really weird at first because not only did we have Tyler Breeze coming out in a disguise, but he was mopping the entrance stage and ring. He even made an Uso trip and shook the mop right in his face. But it did get a little funny when Uso tried to perform his finisher splash in the top rope, but Tyler Breeze kept rolling out of the way. But things got even more weird when Tyler Breeze then disguised himself as an old woman? And Uso accidentally super kicked his partner, and Tyler striked with the kill switch like move and almost pulled a major upset. Brizongo gave it everything they had, but in the end, an Uso delivered a super kick to Fandango to get the pinfall victory and retain the SmackDown Live tag team titles, marking the second prediction I got right. The good here is that the Usos retain the titles. The bad is Tyler Breeze disguising himself as an old woman the original disguise and the entrance and just mopping the floor and ring, which wasn't really that funny to me. And I don't think there is much of an ugly to me here. Next up is Sami Zayn versus the Lone Wolf Baron Corbin. It was an all right match. Not much to say about this one, so I apologize if this one is short. Baron and Zayn gave it their all, and Sami Zayn refused to give up and stay down. Because every time Sami tried to get back up, wham! Baron Corbin will just knock him right back down. When it was all said and done, Sami Zayn delivered the halluva kick to Baron Corbin to get the pinfall victory and marking the third prediction I got right. Again, I apologize for making this one too short. The good here is that Sami Zayn stood up to Baron Corbin and got the win. I don't really know if there is a bad or ugly to this one. Next up is the six women tag team match where Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and the SmackDown Live Women's Champion Naomi take on Tamina, Natalia, and Carmella, the welcoming committee. Again, nothing much to say about this one. Just six cats getting it on and giving it their all. But in the end, the welcoming committee leaves Backlash once again victorious, making it the fourth prediction now I got right. I knew that Becky, Charlotte, and Naomi was going to lose. I knew where this was going to go. Even though none of them turned heel, I knew they were going to lose. That's why in my prediction video, I didn't predict them to win. Smart. Now for the match that happened on the kickoff show, where the perfect 10, Ty Dillinger, squared off against Aiden English. I don't know why, but 
But before the match even started, Aiden English comes out singing again. When will Aiden stop that? Because just like Elias Sampson, he can't sing. Let me know in the comments below whether you agree or disagree. Thankfully, Ty Dillinger shuts him up. Some highlights for me is Aiden pulling Ty's arm to the ropes and landing that amazing neckbreaker. But in the end, even though Aiden English gave it everything he had, he ate Ty's knee and suffered another loss. I knew Ty Dillinger was going to win this one. To me, this one wasn't hard. The good here is that Ty Dillinger raised supreme once again. The bad here is Aiden English once again coming to the ring singing. Next, the United States Championship match where the new face of America, Kevin Owens, defends against the phenomenal number one contender, AJ Styles. There were some cool moments like AJ Styles attempting the Styles Clash onto KO from the apron, the KO going bowling and landed a strike on AJ Styles' leg. AJ Styles even slammed KO onto the apron, the hardest part of the ring. He gave it everything he had, but in the end, when he was going for the Styles Clash on the announce table, his leg got stuck and got counted out. Like predicted, Kevin Owens still the U.S. champion, but even after the match, KO got out of the ring and super kicked AJ Styles. But it was still a good match, and congrats to both men, both proving that they do belong in the WWE. Again, making it the fifth prediction I got correct now. The good here is that KO retained, and it was a great match. The bad is, of course, it was a count-out victory because AJ Styles had his leg stuck into the part of the announce table. The ugly is KO returning outside of the ring after retaining the title via count-out and super-kicking AJ Styles. Next, we got two former Wyatt family members and brothers, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Two super kicks and a not-really-connected clothesline, because it didn't really look much like a clothesline, to give Luke Harper the win. Now that we got all the other matches out of the way, including this one, let's get to the moment that we have been waiting for, the main event. So let's move on forward. And let's get to the final match of the evening. Main event time. Randy Orton defends the WWE Championship against Jinder Mahal. It starts with Randy attacking Jinder Mahal before the match even started. Then later on, Jinder gets slammed into an announce table. After throwing the Sin Brothers around and Jinder Mahal shoving him into the ring post twice, Randy hit an RKO out of nowhere. Randy was going to retain the WWE title, and I would have made history in getting all the predictions right. All of them. Until the Sin Brothers pulled Jinder out of the ring, so he made them pay with a double DDT from the rope. But that gave Jinder the opportunity to land his finishing maneuver and pull up one of the biggest upsets in WWE history, winning his very first championship in the WWE. He actually did it. The good here is, you know, I don't even know if there is a good here, except I guess it was a good match. And Randy Orton has gave it his all. The bad here is that not only did I miss this prediction, but the Sin Brothers had to pull Jenner Mahal out of the ring to prevent Randy Orton from retaining the title. And I guess the ugly here is Jenner Mahal has been able to win his first ever championship in the WWE. Sure. <laughs> 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, are my reactions and review on WWE 2017 Backlash. It was an all right show. So on the VSW scale, I would give it a three out of five. It was all right. What were your thoughts on Backlash and was it good or bad to you? Let me know in the comments below. If you would like to see more videos like this one, then be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Until the next video, I say God bless, take care, stay safe, and welcome to VSWville. Fist bump. Push. <laughs>